Every June in Powell River, British Columbia, Canada, on the ancestral lands of the Kahaman Nation, people gather from all over the world for the Prisma Festival. Join us as we bring you a taste of the music, conversation and celebration for which this event has become known. We do look forward to welcoming you back to the concert hall someday. But until then, this is Prisma on the Couch. Welcome to Prisma on the Couch, episode six. This is our last episode and we are back in Powell River. I hope you enjoyed the beauty of Desolation Sound, but behind us, it's not bad either. I'm Arthur Arnold, Artistic Director, and we have a special guest. My name is Tara O'Donnell, and I'm the Director of Parks, Recreation and Culture for the city of Powell River. Welcome, and thanks for being here. And we have another little guest here who's now distracted, <laughs> and that's my dog Arco. And yes, Arco decided to sit with Tara, so what yeah. can I do? Well, Tara, I'm glad you're here, and um, and you chose to live in this beautiful community. You, you started this job not too long ago. Yeah. And um, here you are. Yes, two months ago, um, I accepted the position. What attracts people to this community, of course, you look at the ocean and the outdoor adventures, but realistically, that's not why I chose to move here. Um, mm. It was really about the community. And I've always been somebody that is eager to roll up my sleeves to build the kind of community that I want to live in. Right. Um, and so that's what I see about this community, particularly the uh, arts and culture sector, mm -hmm. uh, the artists and also people that enjoy the arts. <clears throat> it's really um, a very can-do spirit, right? Um, and that's what makes things like Prisma happen. Well, and I think it's quite unique to have a few big international festivals here in a small town, an isolated town. Why do you think it works here? You know, no individual or no organization can do it alone. It does require uh, heavy lifting from volunteers. It also requires people to be ambassadors for their community. So um, it's you know, it's the individuals that live here that are really selling it. I mean, they it's tell cool. their family and friends about it. Uh, people come and visit and it's like, well, let's go check out Prisma. Yeah, you know, Prisma is really rooted in this community and we get so much support from our membership, from, from the businesses, uh, also from BC government and from other governments, from all the local governments. I mean, the city, Tlaaman, the region, the Katet region, we are everywhere everybody supports us and and that's just awesome and and it's it's beautiful to be here and to be able to make music for this community talking about music shall we listen to some music let's <laughs> we're going to listen to Mahler symphony number no. four the first movement Prisma Festival Orchestra 2019 
That was beautiful. I thought so too. You know, five days of rehearsal and they can play it on this level. That's quite something. An incredible level of focus, obviously. Yeah. Well, shall we continue? I think we should. Next, we're going to take a look at how Prisma trains its musicians to handle high pressure and take care of their mental health. Yes, thanks to Creative BC, we developed a program called Making a Life as a Musician, in which we train our students how to stay mentally healthy and of course it's a it's a really demanding job to always perform on the highest level you always have to be perfect and at least we think we have to be perfect and that's what we are going to see it's very important to be disciplined and work hard but it's also very important to look at life and realize how fantastic and multi-layered and incredible it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what you say is very important that we don't forget that life is more than only music. Mm -hmm. Because it, it enriches you for when you make music. And that, that brings me to something that, that is maybe very controversial. I feel sometimes perfection is our enemy. Thank you. I mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. And it makes us scared. And it get, makes a stance. It's a mental illness. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm fighting so hard with it, yeah. against it, because we need to make beautiful music for ourselves and for others. And if everything is like this and this is not good, then where are we needing? Yeah. Okay, now we have a totally different subject. But mm -hmm. this is balancing life mm -hmm. and and balancing high standards and uh, what's the opposite of the high standards and understanding our own humanity. Right. right. We are often preoccupied with, in my opinion, too often, with the technicalities and, and the fear of not being in tune or not being together. Where, how do we find a balance between, between the, the need for, for perfection and 
having the emotions or the message of the music not suffering how how do we do that as musicians what can you tell I our think, you know that? if we're all working and polishing our technique um in the in the practice room but you know you essentially have two rehearsals before a concert and there's so much growth that happens in those two rehearsals mm -hmm. for a soloist um for sure and um i think you're just learning how to let go that is key you know mm -hmm. to having a great performance um because there's so much leading up to it you know so you're just um working to release and working to relax and just let go mm -hmm. i think a lot of it is just let it go let it go trust trust let go let go trust trust and uh, enjoy the process yeah. i remember you, these guys That's telling important. me this yeah. for you know for years literally it was like you're such incredible teachers but just enjoy the process don't be so you know caught on that. i remember pam telling me don't be so caught on the on the end result enjoy the enjoy what's happening along the way and uh, that's been a huge lesson do you consciously do that while you're actually performing do you like feel here i stand on my two feet ground it um relax relax this relax that use of arm weight of arm you know left hand relax soft do, do you think about that or is that totally but yes lots of times you know i i yes um you know, I am incredibly nervous. I get incredibly nervous before every performance. I'm nervous while I'm performing. And so I'm just always telling myself to breathe, relax, and also um, be light. Because I, I notice that I press way more when I'm nervous. So uh -huh. when you kind of use the reverse psychology of just make it light, then you actually start to just be in the moment yeah. and then you are just breathing and letting go. What is it that we get so nervous for performance? It's what? scary. It's scary. I can't think of any other profession where you are memorizing all the music and you have to make the music absolutely speak and sing, you know, through your instrument. So the, there's a technical, aspect to it there's an emotional there's a physical um you know you, your string could pop there could be a bee uh, zooming around your head that's happened to me too you know every kind of <laughs> scenario has happened yeah. yeah and it doesn't matter if i'm playing for one person or if i'm playing for a million i yeah. will always be you know the hardest on myself so um, I, uh, that's just in inevitable, I think, as an artist. Tell me if this is correct. Horowitz, is it Horowitz, who would basically throw up before he would before every concert. He was so nervous. And finally, he said, I just can't do it, he told his manager. that Back then, in those days, managers were backstage with you. And the manager said, he said, I can't go out there. Just tell them I can't do it. And the manager said, I'm not going to go out there. You can go out there and tell them you're not going to play the concert. <laughs> he said, forget it, I'll play the concert. <laughs> but I mean, this guy was like the god of the piano back then. Yeah. And so I, I always think about that. Like, I just can't do this. I can't do this. What the hell? He did it. <laughs> and he was far away, you know? Yeah. But we have to each find our own method, right? Of, of dealing with our own fears and our own insecurities. And um, and I'm sure you have your own ways also. What I tend to do is I think about the audience and I think this is not about me. This is not about Arthur. I'm here to help my orchestra play well and I'm here to give something to the audience, this beautiful music. And that helps me to not be in my own fear and world and then I can step out confidently into the, in front of a whole few thousand people. And, and it sounds like you go to the place where it's about the beauty of the music that is more important than your own limitation as a human being. And I'm, I'm very curious, Joanna, what do you do? Are you nervous before concerts and how do you deal with it? 
Uh, sometimes I'm nervous before concerts. Um, I can't always tell you why I'm nervous mm -hmm. on certain ones and not on others, but it, for me, it's more about the experience. I, I hope that whenever you sit down and play music that you're excited about what piece you're gonna play, but I always think of it as it's another opportunity to have a chance to be in that time and space where you're creating or recreating this music. And if I can focus on that, I don't seem to have nerves because it's it, that's bigger than me. I'm not mm -hmm. focusing on my part, but I'm, I'm trying to just feel the, the experience of being in the music that I'm involved in, whatever it is. If it's an orchestra, if it's new music, if it's Baroque music, if it's quartet, it's just being involved in making that music because I, I love music. Yeah. Well, and if we're talking about a life in music, I mean, what and you, you touched on that earlier, Arthur, but we, we, are, we are musicians no matter how it is we make a living and no matter how many different things. If, if you love music, then you are a musician and having a life in music is finding ways to, to express that love of music in whatever way you can. And I, I would be curious to hear from all of you, actually, because I found the very thing that I loved the most, being able to sit down and play the cello, was my all-time best way to find solace when COVID hit. And there was just so little else that we could do anymore. I thought, what do people do that don't have that chance to make music? And we're such a, some of the most fortunate people in, in life. Music is so powerful and so uh, beautiful and so rich. And I feel so fortunate that we all are working and striving to make this language sing as much as possible. It was great insight to hear how other people have kind of connected through music uh, with themselves and felt, uh, felt a sense of grounding. I can yeah. relate to that. Yeah. We're going to listen to some more music. We're going to listen to Hatsis, the uh, old photographs. It's a movement of a piano trio. And we had the Cascadia trio and they play it from the Evergreen Theater here in Powell River. That's exactly the building where you work. That's right. Yeah, it's an amazing space. Uh, you know, so wonderful that we have a 700 plus theater um, in a community of this this size. Uh, totally. And it has incredible acoustics, as yeah. you and I have previously discussed in our own conversation. So, yeah, yeah we are so pleased that uh, to be able to provide that, you know, to have that for the community. And totally. we love that it's a, a fit with Prisma. It's wonderful to have uh, Prisma you, there every you year. You know, it's great. If chamber music, you'll hear that, sounds great in this hall, but the full orchestra also, which we heard earlier, that's quite rare that it both works. I don't know, but that's exceptional. It's a treasure. It totally is. It may be a best kept secret, but do you guys know about it? So Totally. Yeah. So uh, Brian Yoon on cello, Terry Tam on violin, and Lorraine Min on piano, Hatsis, old photographs.
Everybody around here knows that Prisma is active in the community for the two weeks out of the year. Everybody looks forward to it. Uh, but this year with the pandemic, things were a little bit different. You guys kind of thought outside the box and you guys were had a real presence in the community. Right. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. I've even heard you guys got quite a bit of media coverage. True. So first of all, we did Prisma for Kids, which, which we do every year. But this year was extra special because the kids didn't listen to music for such a long time weren't able to listen to music for live music. Music. Live music. Yeah. So that was that was awesome. And and probably my highlight there was to play at Kelly Creek School in the outdoor setting, their outdoor classroom, play the swan for them and, and the concentration was just so gorgeous. They were even so silent when it ended. That was a beautiful moment. But also um, there, there was a lady who called me up. Uh, can you please play for my husband? He turns 85. But there's nothing that, that, that we can do for him. So could you please play at the driveway? Which I did. And that was also so exciting. There was so much joy there. And, um, and then, of course, uh, the, the thing you were referring to with the media coverage is my playing at the vaccination clinic. 
Um, I felt it, it was important, you know, to provide live music at, at this important moment where people make important decisions. And, and, and there, there's a lot of different emotions when you come to the clinic. People are so excited or joyful that they finally get the jab. Yeah, there's but, anxiety, there's happiness, there's any gamut of it's, things. Yeah. It's all there. So I felt, you know, music can calm that down or can bring that together. So I went there on a daily basis. Whenever the clinic was open, I went there unless I was too busy or when after I played myself a tennis elbow, I had to, <laughs> had to take a few weeks off. But uh, th that was it's great. It's funny because, you know, getting the, this vaccin vaccine and vaccination is kind of like that mark to, well, dare I say, the end of the pandemic. And yeah. bringing back music, uh, live music, is also kind of that mark of we're breathing new life. We are reactivating, re-energizing and reigniting exactly, exactly. society. Yeah, yeah, and totally. And so that's wonderful to hear. And you know what's so cool? It's in the heart of Prisma. It was, yes. I was in the evergreen theater to Perfect. play that's yeah. where the vaccination clinic is so i hope to be back soon that's uh, great. after we finish prisma on the couch <laughs> um, anyway uh, some more excitement we're going to listen to berlioz berlioz herald in italy and we're going to listen to the prisma festival orchestra 2018 with soloist mate schutz from hungary viola
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Prisma on the Couch, season two. This was the last episode. Thank you, Tara, for being here. Thank you, it was my pleasure. And thank you, everyone involved in Prisma, to make it possible. Our members, our sponsors, all the grant agencies, the governments, thank you for making Prisma possible. And let's not forget the dedicated Prisma staff and board. You know, we do this together. And next year, June 13 to 25, we'll be back in person. And we hope that you'll join us in person. Uh, come to Powell River, check out all the beautiful scenery that we have to offer, catch the great music. We would love to see you here. And behind me, talking about beautiful scenery, you see an empty field, or rather empty. But next year, during Prisma on the Beach, this will be filled again with thousands of people, the food vendors, and one big celebration, one big comeback of Prisma 2022. So, see you next year. Goodbye. Goodbye.